I don't know that most legends are specific to North Carolina or Appalachia, other than they tend to follow their stories from different areas into North Carolina. The Wendigo is a very touchy subject for some people, mainly because they believe a lot of the old lore, as in talking about it, causes it to be attracted to you and can there in turn cause you to have either a bad encounter with them and or just an encounter. I've never met anyone personally that had had a run-in with that creature. I've heard some stories from people who lived in some more wooded areas of Appalachia and they've explained some pretty chilling stories about them, mainly about being chased by them or knowing someone who was attacked or something like that. When I was younger, probably six or seven years ago, I lived out in an area that had a whole bunch of woods behind the house. So me being a child at the time, I would go out and I would walk around just to see what I could find and get away from everything. Not knowing this then, but understanding it now, the warning signs of a Wendigo being when the entire woods go silent is not a good thing. They tend to negatively impact the entire area that they are in. And understanding this now, realizing that every time I got an uncomfortable feeling in the woods was when the entire woods went silent. And that being said, it was not pleasant at all. Basically, the folklore all around this creature stem from Native American folklore. <clears throat> and their belief behind it was that a person who tasted the flesh of another person, or the heart of another person, depending on who told the story, the flavor of the meat itself drove that person into madness. And causing them to become this disfigured creature of the night. The knot deer is another touchy subject for a lot of people, only because the stories that are being told about this creature are very spread out in how different they are. Some have talked about this creature walking around on two legs and exhibiting very long limbs. Others talk about it being a four-legged walking creature with the same features of, you know, having long limbs, long face, and frontward-facing eyes. I had never heard of any lore other than a few little stories that some old-timer had told me one time about some tall lanky deer they saw in the woods that didn't run from them. I haven't heard much other than this creature is a stalker. They don't actively engage people, but they won't run away from you either. They are kind of like a curious child, if that makes any sense. I've only ever met one person who had what I could even think of as an encounter with this creature, and that was a man I called Pops. He was probably a younger man when it happened, I'd say mid-40s, and this was... This would have been back in the, the middle 80s, probably. In the same woods, actually, as I spoke about previously. And it was before the area had really been developed. So there wasn't a whole lot of 
commotion going on other than the train that would go by every once in a while. And his experience wasn't necessarily a bad one. It was more unsettling than anything because this deer-like creature just would not leave him alone. It wouldn't attack him, but it would not go away. <clears throat> like a lot of creatures of lore, the warning signs of them tend to be silence. And as we all know, silence in the woods is not normal at all. They just bring about a negative energy that pushes everything away from them in that area. So to determine the difference between a knot deer and a wendigo would be kind of hard unless you saw it yourself and you knew that's exactly what that was. But in my opinion, if it was to be a knot deer, I would have seen it. I don't think I would have seen a wendigo. I feel like there's a lot of misunderstood folklore about this creature only because when people see something that doesn't make sense, their first instinct is to attack or run without question. And typically, if you have an encounter with one of these creatures, they're not violent necessarily, just creepy. And it's believed that these creatures are not creatures at all, but potentially a deer with a type of disease that causes it to look like this. But that being said, there's no way to tell the difference between a sick deer and a not deer only because the stories vary so much. There's a few stories about the mermaids in the Cape Fear River that I've read about, uh, but there's one in particular that I've heard personally that has always kind of stuck with me. And it was told to me by a man who used to go swimming there often back many years ago, probably before a lot of the pollution that's in the water now it was present. And it, it's my opinion that the pollution has pushed them away from the area, but I do believe that they did have a heavy presence there. I, I think it would be considered arbitrary to not believe in this legend only because the evidence that we have at hand with this type of lore is too vast. There's too much being told about this specific legend and too much evidence around it being a mermaid or a siren or whatever you want to call it in whatever type of folklore it comes from. It's just something that would be hard to not believe. Personally, I've never seen anything of the sorts in the Cape Fear River, mainly because it's too dirty to see in the water. The visibility is probably a foot, maybe two, if you're lucky on a good day when it hasn't been raining a whole lot or it hasn't been raining a whole lot upriver and there's a whole lot of I guess, stuff in the water. I'm not sure the exact term for it, but it's not clear enough to really see anything. I feel like mermaids and sirens are really more of something you would find out in the ocean. I have a hard time seeing how they would come upstream and or upriver anyway to feed on the fish run. I could see how it would be one or the other. There is a truth behind people just disappearing in the river without a trace. So it wouldn't surprise me at all if they were sirens and they tend to draw people under. I feel like this legend has a lot of misconstrued ideas behind it. 
there's your sailors who believe that mermaids or sirens are dangerous, deadly creatures that hunt without remorse and feed solely to feed. Um, not really sure if they would have a particular appetite for people only because we're so bony. And I would think that they have more of a hunting sense like a shark to go for more meaty creatures rather than such a bony creature. I know that mermaids as depicted in lore are typically nonviolent aggressors of the sea. They tend to go upriver when they feel they need to, to kind of ride out the harsh ocean for a certain time period. That's just my opinion anyway. Sirens, on the other hand, I feel are a little bit more aggressive if they're not even in the same species family as a mermaid. They have been said to have a call that keep, when heard, draws you to them and can eventually make you go crazy 